Hi Edna, are you okay? Well, I'm a bit confused. The doctor said my daughter had an infection and it's caused by germs. I don't know what he meant. Maybe I could help you explain that to you. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. What about if we go to the library and we can look at what germs are? Okay, let's go. Okay. think if we share that story with other people? Yeah, I reckon that's a good idea. Okay. Well, a long time ago there was a man playing with two pieces of glass and he realised that when he put the pieces of glass together he could make tiny little things look much bigger. Really? Yeah. And that's the beginning of how they start to identify what we call germs. Okay. So this is what a microscope looks like today. It's still got glass inside it but it makes things look much, much bigger. Like eyeglasses, when you wear your eyeglass you can see things much bigger and clearer. So this man saw things much smaller than an ant. They're so small you can't even see them with your normal eyes. He called them animalcules because they are very small animals. Later on, people called them germs. Really? They look like little animals that we can't see? Yeah. First they thought they were just funny little things but now we know that they can make you sick. They gave them different names because of the different shapes they were. Some are round, some are long, some are skinny, some are in spirals. There's lots of different shapes. One day, hundreds of years ago, many people started getting sick from a sickness they called the plague. Nobody knew what was making them sick, so people blamed other people for making them sick. They called these people witches and said they were doing magic. These people weren't really witches. To test if they were witches, they put them in a cage in water. If they floated, they were a witch. And if they sank to the bottom, they weren't a witch. Either way, they killed the people they thought were witches, even though they had nothing to do with the sickness. But all this time, people were still dying from the sickness. One man in 1854 named John Snow in London found out that people were getting sick with a different sickness called cholera from drinking water with a certain type of German it called Vibrio cholerae. Everybody thought he was crazy because the water looked clean and they couldn't see anything in it. They also thought it was the air making people sick because there was bad pollution in London. Then John Snow showed that mainly people who drank the water from the certain water pump were getting sick. Then people started to listen to him. They stopped using the water pump that was making people sick and people stopped getting sick. They were not getting sick because the germs were in the water from the water pump. It also took a long time before people knew what was causing the plague and that was making them sick. It was not until the 1890s that a scientist showed that disease was actually caused by germs. This man's name was Louis Pasteur. So it took people over 500 years to work out that germs were causing this sickness. So Mark, how many people have died from this plague? Ah, oh, Edna, over 100 million people died during this time. 
That's about five times as many people that live in Australia today died from that germ. Blaming people for witchcraft because of all those deaths didn't help anybody. But learning that it was germs and learning how to stop those germs stopped people from dying. So we have to be careful washing our hands, cleaning the kitchen. Yeah, that's right. And by washing your hands and keeping things clean, you're stopping germs from spreading to other people. So where do those germs like to live, though? That's a good question, Edna. Those germs can live anywhere all around us. They can live on our skin, they can live inside our body, but most places they like to live are moist and warm and dark. So that's places around the toilet, in the kitchen, in cupboards, where there's food left out in the warm air, in dirt or in puddles, muddy puddles outside. Lots and lots of germs can grow in those places. Some germs you can see with your eyes, like this mould on this piece of fruit. But most germs are too small for us to see with our eyes, so we'd need to use a microscope like the one we talked about earlier. So to start looking at germs, let's look at some things we can see, like these ants. Yeah, we'll put it under the microscope and have a look at it. This is an ant. Usually they are pretty hard to see, but when we look at it under a magnifying glass, it looks much bigger. Now, putting it on a piece of glass and under the microscope, it looks much bigger again. You can even see its mouth and teeth here. But germs are much smaller than an ant. Have a look at this. There's a scabies mite running along an ant's head. This shows that scabies are much smaller than an ant. Germs are even smaller than scabies. To show you how small germs are, let's have a look at a piece of hair under the microscope. Can I have a piece of your hair? You can see that under the microscope, your hair looks as thick as a tree trunk. Next to the hair, these smaller things here are called germs. Germs have lots of different shapes. Some are round, some are long, and some are in a, like a spring shape. You see this one here? It's shaped like a rod. People use the name bacteria for all different types of germs. But not all bacteria makes us sick though. Some bacteria lives in our stomach and helps us to stay healthy by turning the food we eat into energy. There are a lot of bad germs around us that can make you sick. To stop those germs from going in your body, you need to wash your hands and keep your hands clean. If you've got germs on your hand, it can get onto your food and then inside your body and make you sick. These germs can get in our body other ways too. For example, this fly lands on some poo and picks up some germs. Then it lands on some food that people are eating. Then people eat the food and it goes inside them and later on it makes them sick. They can get diarrhea, vomiting or a really sore tummy. So that's why it's good to keep the flies away from the food. Yeah, that's right. Germs can grow and spread very quickly inside our bodies as well as in dark and warm places. They can grow and spread very, very quickly and make people sick. This picture shows how quickly some bacteria can grow over just a couple of hours. Even when something's just got a few germs on it, they can grow and spread really quickly. Oh really? What about little kids? Do they get germs on their sores? Yes they can. So it's really important to clean sores and cover them with a band-aid or a bandage and try and get rid of that sore.
if the soil gets worse and that germ stays in there, that germ can cause problems, can cause kidney problems, can even cause rheumatic fever, which can make heart problems later on when the child gets older. Germs can grow inside your nose and cause sickness in the ears, nose and even in your lungs. It's really important to get kids with runny noses to blow their nose and wipe it clean with the tissue. Throw the dirty tissue in the bin or fire so the germs don't spread to other people. Well, my daughter's got this very bad sick and she's been coughing for days. Well, that could be a virus. It's a different type of germ. Viruses are really, really small types of germs, even smaller than bacteria, and they can spread really easily. From spitting, spitting on the ground, having dirty tissues lying around. So it's really important not to spit and to wash your hands really good. It's really important to use soap when you wash your hands as rubbing your hands with soap and water helps to wash the germs away more than just using water. You should rub your hands together for about 20 seconds. Drying your hands with a clean towel or clean paper towel will also help to get rid of germs. Germs grow in wet areas and keeping your hands dry will stop the germs from growing there. Viruses can also spread from using the same cup as somebody who's sick and got that bad cough or even using the same knife and fork as that person who's sick. So it's really important to keep things clean and wash your hands really well. And that's why we keep our houses clean and kitchen. Knives, forks and glasses so that people don't get sick from other people. Yeah, that's right, Edna. But inside our body, we've also got protection to try and stop germs and viruses from making ourselves sick. But we need to keep our body healthy by eating good food and getting exercise to keep our protection strong inside us. So, Mark, that's why older people and young children get sick all the time. That's right, Edna. Sometimes with young babies and old people and even people with things like kidney disease or diabetes their body's not as strong to stop those germs so now that we know about germs it's really important to keep our hands clean especially after going to the toilet and before we make food keep the house clean keep kids skin clean especially if they have sores you should clean them and cover them and if people look like they're getting sick from germs, they should go to the health centre and get it checked. Well, that's a good story. I should go and tell my daughter about this story. Oh, well, I hope it's helped, Edna. Well, it is important to uh, tell a story about germs. Well, I hope your daughter gets better, Edna. Thank you. That's okay. No worries.